Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 105. Thanks so much for joining me today. So since the last video, I went off to Melbourne with my daughter and we had a great time at the Melbourne Formula One Grand Prix, which was, it was, it was much more fun than I expected it to be. Um, I even said to her that I would even consider going again if, if the opportunity arose. So yeah, we had a good time together. So that was nice. I have also begun work and done a fair bit of work on the mask that I've been making for my other daughter's 21st. So you may remember she's having a masquerade party for her 21st and so I thought it would be a nice thing to embroider my mask and then give it to her as a gift um, after I've worn it. The whole idea for a masquerade party came because when we went to Venice many years ago we were in Italy for me to do one of my books I guess that was the Sardinian book um, and we went to Venice and my daughter purchased a mask there and ever since then she's wanted to use it and so this seemed like the perfect opportunity so I thought about masks and I thought about how opulent and over the top they often are and I thought what's the most opulent and over the top sort of way that I can think to embroider this and what I came up with was actually Dresden embroidery. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Dresden embroidery is drawn thread work that's worked on very fine fabric in order to look like lace. Look To look like the lace very much of the Rococo period, which is not the same sort of period as masks were used in Venice, but you know, the whole idea of over the top and opulent was what I was going for. So let me show you the process that I went through to work the mask to where I've got it and then I'll show it to you. So this is the mask that I have and it's made from, I don't know, some sort of plaster or something. It looks like there's some cardboard in it. And I was going to try and figure out how to um, embroider a piece of fabric to go on this and I figured that the best way to do that would be to have the fabric on the bias because then it would fit to the shapes much better than if I had the grain going down and across and I did do that I did stick with that um, my wonderful friend in Norway Katinka suggested that the best thing to do to get a pattern off this would be to cover the whole thing in glad wrap and then or cling wrap you know those clingy fine plastic films and then stick duct tape over the top of that or something like duct tape. So that's what I did. Um, so this was put onto it. Not really going to fit. Anyway, maybe it's the wrong way up. No, that's the right way up. Anyway, it's not really fitting anymore, but I did cover it in glad wrap. As you can see, there's the glad wrap in there. And then I put duct tape all over the top of it. And then I cut one side of that off to give me a pattern. No, I went that way, so that was up the wrong way. <laughs> um, for that side. And then I made the assumption, it's probably an incorrect assumption, that the other side would be fairly much the same. Actually, it's not too bad. So that probably wasn't a bad assumption to make. And so I used that as my pattern to create that. So that is down the center and you can see here that there's a section and that is because there's a it's not straight down the middle there's a dip out of it so this will become a dart that I will make in my fabric. So once I had the shape then I could start drawing on it and so the one on 
the I don't know this side <laughs> I did first and I sort of liked it but I wasn't really happy with it and then I did this one and I became much more happy with that and then that became that got worked up into the full pattern I reversed it sorry I hope you can see this okay there we are. I'm not very good at getting things on the uh, on the screen so that became that and then I've got so I took some photographs um, through oh, maybe one or two um, the working of it stage which I will insert about here And then the other day I finished the embroidery. So what I've worked it on is a fine linen, which is a Biso linen, which um, is an Italian one, which um, I probably in the past have known what count it is, and I probably could work it out again. But off the top of my head, I don't know, but it's very fine. And it's also quite see-through, which is exactly what I wanted for this. So you can see that um, some of these main shapes, the long ones here, are worked in um, shadow embroidery, so that's a double back stitch. Um, and then all of the other little teardroppy shapes off the sides, and also the center flowery sort of thing, um, they've been filled with various um, fillings, which are mostly pulled thread, but some of them are just satin stitch. And the idea was that I wanted to balance the open and the closed, the heavy and the light, and get good balance across the whole thing. So I'm really happy with how that's worked out. The next difficulty is going to be how to mount it onto this. And I used to work as a picture framer, and one of the important things about picture framing, particularly of needlework, but of anything, is that you always wanted the work to be completely recoverable. So you wouldn't want to stick it on with glue because then the glue would make it so you couldn't take it off again. So in thinking about this, um, in have, how to shape it onto this, but also how to attach it to this, I'm trying to get it to sit how, about how it will sit. It doesn't really want to. But anyway, it'll sit something like that on it. I need to actually show it to you in on the screen where you can see it so it'll sit like that but I would like to have it black behind <coughs> excuse me so my plan was to um, paint the mask black so that you could see the colors through it better and I'll show you that so you can see that a whole heap better when there's black behind it that's the idea that I want um, but what I've recently thought of doing is actually covering the whole thing um, in felt and the felt can have a, a, a dart taken out of it down here I can just sort of cut that out and then sew it back together again with black thread so that you don't actually see it then I'll lay that over the top and because it'll be felt um, I thought I'd stitch this to the felt and then the felt can be attached to this with glue because it doesn't matter so much if the felt is glued on but I don't want the linen fabric to be glued on because then that won't be recoverable I don't care about the felt though pardon me so that I'll probably edge it in something maybe some stitching around the edge and then I'll probably put um, another felt backing on the back that's my current thought I have until I think I've got about a week and a half to get this finished which should be enough time but there's a lot of problem solving yet for how to get that onto this but I just thought you'd like to see where I'm up to with it. I have enjoyed it very much. Um, choosing all of the stitches and working out where they were going to sit. So I did one side first um, and problem solved it. And then I re um, reflected it to the other side so that it's um, reasonably symmetrical. So yeah, that was great fun. Um, it's probably nothing like what you thought I would come up with, but... Uh, I just thought that that style of embroidery would probably be the best to work with for this style of thing. So hmm, I'm looking forward to seeing it finished and I'm looking forward to seeing her reaction to it as well.
So that's all I have for today. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye.